Okay, so I wanted to add one last part to this because curiosity got the better of me. And so I swatched out, um, this is on the top, that's the swatch that we made, um, that I made on this last video with one-fourth Thalo Blue and three-fourths Ross Sienna. Here's the actual Cascade Green from Daniel Smith. Um, I just tried another swatch just to see how, you know, a little bit different water, you know, if it would uh, separate out. Um, and it's still drying, but you can see this is separating out, um, just not the same way um, as the Cascade Green Mix from Daniel Smith. Um, and here is that one that's like half phthalo blue and half Rossiana. And it kind of mostly looks like phthalo blue. Um, but what I wanted to do was one last little mix. Um, because at first I thought, well, my phthalo blue is empty. <laughs> and then I'm like, wait a minute. I have all these. But I want to take some of this mixture um that was one-fourth Thalo Blue and three-fourths Ross Sienna and mix it with more Ross Sienna. Um, and here's my little empty tray. So this is our mix. And let me get some of this Ross Sienna out of here that I was going to mix. I'm just going to use here. Try not to get any blue with it. Just a little Rassiana and maybe equal amount. At some point, I'll figure out some really scientific way of mixing these better. Um, and this is why it's nice to have buy the convenience colors because it's always the same mix. Um, some people prefer to mix themselves, and they don't have to fully mix it um, so that it's already partially separated. Now, let me find a brush here. So this mix is lighter than this one, and we'll see in just a minute. So I marked the back of this Arting's trading card, and I marked it as if I divided that fourth in half, so it's one-eighth phthalo blue. Um, so let's see what happens with that. Um, I'll go ahead and oh, my table is now a mess. That's what happens when you get sucked into experimenting and that creative excitement. Things just get thrown around. But here's my little mini hockey brush. It has the softest little um, hairs on it and just want to make sure I get this nicely wet gonna wipe my little area here they're so small that I didn't I don't usually tape them down so here is one eighth Thalo blue, approximately, and uh, seven eighths. Ooh, that is much greener. So I think the sweet spot for mixing the Daniel Smith tube, what's in the Daniel Smith Cascade green tube, is probably somewhere between one fourth and one eighth. Thalo blue. Now this is actually quite a lovely green. Um, it's kind of sapish, hooker's green, but you can see a little separation already starting to happen. So, um, I think I'm going to bring some of this across. We'll see. I don't like to mess with it too much because you see what happens there. It gets sucked around. But, oops.
Now, um, I really like that. So I think that my goal in experimenting is um, partially to see if I can mix the Daniel Smith version and partially to see what else will happen. And um, so I just have a scratch of the back of one of these bookmarks. I'm just going to um, set that aside for a moment and then I'll lay them all back out at the end maybe. I'm going to wet this bookmark lengthwise. I'm doing this on the fly, but I kind of get ideas and um, like to just try and pursue them. Now I have my different colors. I, ha I have all three different paint brushes with um, the different richnesses of phthalo blue and the different from the different mixtures. Now, if you were to mix phthalo blue and burnt sienna on your palette and just not fully mix them, and then dip your paintbrush in, you would get um, different amounts on the different sides of your paintbrushes, and it would look more like this. And that is why I think a lot of, oh, here, let's add some little water like I did for the other ones. That's why a lot of artists like to mix their own and not fully mix the colors so that they can get all these different variegations or variations. I'm not sure exactly which is the right word, but see how you could make this, this is like an example of how you could make a landscape with two tubes of paint um, and come up with all of these different colors. And then if you did a little cabin in the foreground and a little snow, it would be an amazing painting. I would like to try this in... I'm just scratching this out really quickly. Um, I would like to try this full size um, on a big sheet of paper now because it's quite lovely. I'm going to go ahead and throw in, this is, um, yeah, I'm going to delete some of that, throw in a little bee cabin. Just a little bee. and windows and then we'll come in and shade the side of that building and add this is my rough scrappy on the fly cabin um, and we'll go ahead and add some snow which I'm doing mostly with that one color. Here, let's take some of the darker. Taylor blue. It's a teensy brush, but um, so some of my ideas start like this with like flash ideas. But oh, let's try this. And um, I do maybe a scrappy job, but. Then I can go back and, um, that is kind of a scrappy cabin. Maybe it's a falling down cabin. Anyway, you get the gist. This is uh, definitely worth experimenting. Definitely worth buying some single pigment colors and trying to mix your own. Thalo is an amazing color. Thalo blue is great for skies. You can use it. Even if you don't want to mix like this. Uh, raw Sienna, I've been using it for like most of my paintings. At some point, I'll put some of those up. But um, I hope this has been helpful for you. I'm actually pretty thrilled about this and want to keep experimenting. But I will let you go for now, and thank you for joining me. Um, okay, bye.